Okay, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Happy Tuesday. Today are we, we are working in our math workbooks, pages 234 and 235. Today we are going to look at unit fractions. So a unit fraction is simply just a fraction, okay, that we are using. So a unit fraction would be an example like one third. One unit, a unit one unit of a fraction, okay? And so we're looking at that and looking at multiple units of fractions, okay? So if I said multiples right away, that tells me that we would be multiplying. So let's say I say, what is the second multiple of the unit fraction one third? So we would just simply continue to practice our multiplying equation. So two over one, because we're multiplying two times. So I'm just turning that whole number into a fraction. 2 times 1 is 2, and we're multiplying fractions, we just multiply across numerators. And then we do the same, we multiply the denominator. So 1 times 3 is 3. So the second multiple of the 1 third fraction, unit fraction, is 2 thirds. I'm going to prove that to you right now. 1 third plus 1 third equals 2 thirds. So we're going to use that knowledge to help us today. Okay, we are looking at number, we're gonna skip number one and we'll come back to that and instead look at number two. Write an addition equation and a multiplication equation to describe the picture. So I'm gonna say our page number one more time, 234. So we're going to multiply this, we're gonna add this first, it says an addition equation and a multiplication equation. So how many times are we going to look at the unit fraction one-fifth? So one, two, three, four, five, six. So six times. So that means we're going to add one-fifth six times. Okay. Okay. So we have uh, six times that we've done one-fifth. You can pause to write in your book at any time as needed. So now our multiplication equation is, so we are seeing what is the sixth multiple. So we just go six times one fifth, our unit fraction. So then it says, what is the sixth multiple of one fifth? So six over one times one over five. I'm just gonna do my equation a little backwards. So we're gonna have the answer on the left. So six times one, we multiply the numerators first, equals six. One times five is five, so six fifths. That is our answer. Now we're gonna jump onward to number three. Oh, I would like you to go back to number one now after we've tried this one. This one looks a little harder. So that's why we started this first. So please pause. See if you can figure out the addition equation for number one and the multiplication equation. Then resume. First off, we needed to figure out what unit we are um, working with. So our unit is one eighth. And we're doing that two times. So, but right here for A, they wanted an addition one. So one eighth plus one eighth. So our multiplication equation is two times one eighth, our unit fraction. And so what is the second multiple of one eighth? So we go two over one times one over eight. We bring over our numerator, so it's one times two is two. Eight times one is eight, so two eighths. Now we're gonna look at number three together. Okay, draw a picture that represents the equation. So we have three of one sixth. So I did one sixth, one sixth, one sixth, and shaded in three, one sixth of each three times. Okay, now you're going to do the same thing for number four, but this time, oh, please pause. You can copy my illustration, or you can do something like a bar graph if you want to. I'll show you what that looks like. So if you did a six, so 
and then you could even do something like that and draw three more of those if you want to. Your choice on the shape and how you're choosing to represent the fraction one sixth. You just need three of those. Please pause as you finish your drawings. Okay, so now we are working with this next one, draw a picture that represents um, one tenth. So that'll be you, you draw whatever shape you want in one tenth, and we need how many of those? We need four of those, okay, because it says four of one tenth, or if you looked at the multiplication equation, that would help you too. So please pause the video before we move on to our next one as you finish number four. Number five, it says use a unit fraction to write an equation and an equivalent multiplication equation. So you'll just continue on. Um, so your addition equation is going to equal the same as your multiplication equation. Okay, and it says draw a picture to represent this equation. So this is you taking your learning one step further and creating your own equations. Please pause um, and work on this and then unpause when you're done to watch what I came up with. Or if you're still a little confused, you can see what I came up with and come up with your own right after. Okay, so the one that I'm going to choose is, I'm gonna do halves. I like halves, they're easy to draw. So one half plus one half. I'm gonna say, what is a third multiple of one half? That's essentially what I'm asking in this question. So my multiplication equation would go three, because I have three above. Three times one half. Okay, so I finished up my drawing here to show you what that would look like. So three of my one halves. I'm still going to solve here in one of my equations. So three times one is three, one times two is two, so three halves. And I always like to circle my answer so that the teacher and others know what exactly is my answer. Um, so now pause if you haven't done your own and join us when you're ready at number six on the top of page 235. So here we are going to use the equations that we've used all along, but right now I'm going to put it in to a rule for us. Our rule is, okay, A, B is equivalent to the multiple A times our fraction unit, 1B. So this is what we're going to use to help us all along here with these next four and really what we've been doing all along. Okay, so our unit fraction in all of these equations is going to have a denominator of 12, so 1 12th. Now, how we're going to figure out our multiple instead of looking at the denominator, we're going to look at the numerator this time. So our numerator is 4. So 4 twelfths is equivalent to the multiple of 4 times 1 twelfth. Okay, please use this information and try to solve B. If you really want to challenge yourself, you can try the rest of them. So B, C, and B. Pause and try on your own. Okay, welcome back. So again, we're going to look at the numerator for a multiple 8. We look at the denominator now to figure out what the unit fraction is, so 1 tenth. Now, for C and D, the only thing that could change is where the equation ends. So, um, so they just flip-flopped flip sides is all. So again, we're looking to our numerator for our um, which multiple we're looking at. And then our unit fraction, we look at the denominator, 1 fifth. Please pause and try D on your own this time, if you haven't yet. 
Okay, and the last one, the ninth of 1A. Okay, now we're ready to move on to seven. Seven eighths is a multiple of what unit fraction? Okay, so unit fraction, that tells us we're looking for what fraction? Okay, seven eighths is a multiple of a fraction one eighth. Four fifths is the fourth multiple of the unit fraction, what unit fraction? One fifth. Continue on with C and D. Unpause when you're done. Unit fraction one half and one fourth. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to skip number eight. You'll do that on your own. Instead, we're going to go to number nine because number nine is the most challenging of all of these. Okay, so here we go. Number nine, it says, try this. Write a multiplication number model with an unknown to represent the problem, then solve. Jason has six pounds of almonds to share, almond bags of trail mix, among bags of trail mix. He wants to put one fifth pound of almonds in each bag. So how many bags can he make? So he has six pounds total. Okay, each bag holds one fifth. So we're trying to figure out what how many bags he can do total. So bags times one fifth equals six. So remember any whole number, we always put a one under it when we're multiplying across later. But the problem is, is we need to figure out how many is even in one pound, let alone six pounds, so how many bags it would take. So if I added one fifth and I wanted to get a whole pound, since five's the denominator, I would go times five equals five fifths, which equals one. Okay, so for every one pound, we would end up using five bags, okay? So now we're gonna take that knowledge. What is five times six then? Five times six, because we are, so we need five bags for one pound. That's how I got this five. And we have six bags, six pounds total. So that's going to tell us how many bags we do. Five times six is 30. So 30 bags. Okay, I was going to read to you. Um, so you can pause this, fill in your equation, and then I'll read to you number eight. Okay, again, you are writing a multiple number model with an unknown to represent the problem then solve. Jessica made three pitchers of lemonade. Each pitcher holds one fourth of a gallon. So how many gallons of lemonade did she make? Okay, it's not telling us the total yet. You are figuring out that total. So you'll write a multiplication number model with unknown and then you'll solve that. So pause, write her in there, and then we'll go over it when you're done. Okay, so our equation looks like this. Three times one fourth equals G for gallons. I just chose that unknown. So if we actually multiply that across, three over one times one over four is equivalent to three. Three times one is three. Four times one is four. So three fourths of a gallon. That's our lesson for today. I hope you have a great rest of your day and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.